Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to explore ClipChamp. That's Microsoft's video uh, making tool. It'll help you do things from, you know, make family stuff to making Instagram and TikTok videos. It'll do captions. It has a green screen function. It has literally millions of free video and graphic picture clips. Something really important if you've tried this in the past is it is massively improved from when it was first released. This is unsponsored. If you like the video, big thumbs up would be appreciated. And the point of this video, yeah, we're going to show you and teach you how to do a lot of things, but really ClipChamp is so simple. It's not so much about the, the specific process we'll show you. It's remembering that you can do them in this tool. So don't get hung up too much on the real detail here. First thing you need to know is you don't even need to install it. You can run it straight from the web. Just go to clipchamp.com. Now, if you do that, you might think, well, that, that's not, that way it doesn't make a difference what hardware I'm on. Uh, if I'm on a really old computer or a really new computer, it won't make any difference because it's all going to be done in the cloud. No, it's going to use your local CPU and GPU for the editing and for the video encoding. So it still makes a difference. But that being said, I'm just going to pull it down from the Microsoft Store. So go to the store. Type in ClipChamp and install. And from now on, you can just get to it here. Start, type ClipChamp, and there it is. Before we get started, you need to understand that there are three different levels of ClipChamp. We'll put up a list on the uh, side here, giving you all the details. The free version, though, limits you free video and still picture clips. However, if you have a Microsoft 365 subscri subscription, it'll unlock about million clips. And then beyond that, there's an additional level you can get they call ClipChamp Premium. And that moves you up to about 5 million clips. All right, so let's do something fun. Let's create something from scratch using your own clips. So we'll go and create a new video from scratch. And in here, you can select import media or you can just drag your files. It's just a lot easier to drag stuff. So I'm taking these random pictures that I have in a, a video I've got, and I'm just dragging them in, boom. And you'll notice at the bottom here, it gives you some basic tutorials. Yeah, just drag and drop your stuff here. So say I wanted this picture here, just drag it in, pretty easy. Oh, that's going for, you can see the timeline here, four seconds. I don't want that on for four seconds. I just want to drag it down to two seconds. One of the big improvements with ClipChamp now is that it supports multiple audio tracks, which means if you want to import music, no problem. You can overdub your voice as well. Let's go to record and create. And you'll see in here, there's all kinds of cool stuff. Just audio. That's just if you want to record just your voice because you want to overdub. Camera, that's your webcam. Screen and camera, that's very common. Let's do that one. And it asks you what camera or microphone you want to use, probably your default. And there's even a pretty cool voice coach. It tells you if you're talking too quickly or not loudly enough. And then you can choose, do you want to record the entire screen or just a little part of it? Okay, so here we are in the ClipChamp page. Yes, this is being recorded with ClipChamp. And you can see I can uh, move around. I could have selected just part of the screen, but as you saw, I selected the entire thing. And now, let's say I wanted to run a little Copilot explanation. And you can ask your questions here, or you can just click the little Copilot AI button on the right side. And I could explain in here that Copilot is just really chat GPT. Okay, so you get the idea. Let's stop recording. Okay, so let's say I didn't want my video there. Well, you can see if I try to move it around, it's going to move everything. Well, that's because you've got everything selected on the timeline at the bottom. So just select on just the element you want to move, which in my case, is just my video. So just double click on that and I want to make it larger. Well, easy to do, just make it larger. Move it around, move it over here. And you think, well, wow, it's taking up a lot of space and I don't think people really care about my bookshelf. Problem, click the crop option here and you can just crop it down, make it smaller. In editing, we call this a mask. There it is. And you could play it. You go, ah, nobody wants to see that part. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to uh, select the split button. Now I can also just press the S key, and I know that because you can see right here, it says S. That tells me what the keyboard shortcut is. So let's go over to here and say, yeah, nah, let's just cut out all of my talking because I talk too much and everybody knows that. There we go. Now I can take that and I can crop that out and I could put something else in here, but oh, I forgot to cut, also cut out the video at the bottom. No problem. That's the screen recording. I want to click on that, select, go back here, select, and you can see, boom, it's got it. 
Awesome. And now I can just drag this and move it over. I can even overlay things on each other because again, it supports multiple tracks. So let's say for some reason I want to put this still picture over top here. I can just drag it on top and I can move. You go, I don't see it on the screen yet. Drag the timeline over. There it is. Now, I don't want that whole thing there. I'm going to move it here. And let's say I wanted that there for some reason. It's a pretty good concert, by the way. And let's also drag the yellow Mustang. There we go. And okay, and I want that to be over here for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but I'm just trying to make the point. It's very flexible. Uh, but gee, I don't see the, the concert at the bottom there. No problem. That's because again, on the timeline, they weren't stacked. So now look, boom. And you decide, no, I want them to come up separate layer. I want the one to come up a few seconds later. So we'll do that. Slide a lot the timeline along, boom, that concert comes up and then boom, there's the Mustang. And oh, I want this concert thing to go a little bit longer. No problem, just drag it. It's all drag and drop, so easy. Editing software often offers uh, transitions, you know, a way to fade one image to another so that things aren't quite so harsh. How can you do that here? No problem. Let's uh, take a look at this edit down here, this cut down here. I wanna make that a little smoother because it's a bit jarring going from the one image to the other. So how do you do that? Well, no problem, click on transitions and let's go to hard white down and just drop it there. And uh, for the background, we'll do a different transition. We'll do a hard wipe up. Now I can click on these transitions and I can select transition in the top right. And I can say how long I want it for. So let's make this ridiculously long. You'd never do this in reality. And same with this one on the bottom. Let's click on the one on the bottom. We'll make that even longer, which would just be nutty. There we go. Kind of cool, huh? Now, just take uh, note that uh, most elements in every one of these things, the background, the screen recordings, they're all elements. You can click on them and you'll see uh, different options that pop up in these context menus. So for instance, on this one, I can crop it if I thought this was just a little too large. I can fit it to screen, but I can also click the ellipsis over here and I can do things like rotate 90 degrees. And let's say I had this over top of this one. Well, I want the other. I want it the other way around. Well, I can right click and I can order the pictures. There we go. And I want to do this now like that. That's how I want to do it. And then there's all the usual things like text. So you can put special text over top anywhere you want. And it's all the same logic. You simply type into here, I like cheese or whatever else you want. And you can resize. And then over in the properties panel, you can change the font, you can change the size, you can change what fades in and out. So in other words, ClipChamp is as complex or as simple as you want it to be. Let's go over a couple of more things though yeah, that you might not have thought of. You know at the start, I mentioned that there are different versions of this software, the free and the two different paid versions. One of the big things that gets you in the paid versions is the content library. There's a lot of things that are included for free, but because I have signed in with my Microsoft 365 account, I have access to 4 million clips. Now, if you just want to use your own content, you don't care about this. But if you want some stock footage, stock images, stills, or videos, so let's look through here. Let's go to overlays. Let's put the overlay over right here. We'll just drop it. I'm going to resize it down to here. And you, again, you might think, well, I don't see it here. That's correct. Move your timeline over. There it is. So now when it starts, watch this. And I don't want to look for overlays anymore, but you don't have to even do this. Look, you can simply click on all and type in what you want. So I want car and I want a car video. There's sound effects, there's mute, there's all kinds of stuff, but I'm going to search for car videos. And you'll notice that most of these have the little diamond on it, which means even if you have a 365 subscription, it's still your, something you're going to have to pay for. Uh, when I look through this, I see a whole lot of diamonds. I, that's, I just want to see the stuff that I can actually use. I don't want to pay extra. Click the filter on the right side and select free only. And these are the ones you get for free. I can just drag it out. And again, I can make it shorter. I can crop parts of it out. Make it picture in picture. I can rotate it. I can adjust its colors. 
you can see here there are 201 options for free. Not bad. And Microsoft is always expanding this product, including adding some artificial intelligence features, one of which is remove background. Uh, this little symbol here is the international uh, logo for AI. So if you ever see that, it's probably something you can do with it. So let's, let's go look at this picture here with uh, me and this Mustang. And I'm going to right click on it and I can remove background and you'll see the uh, little AI graphic there again. So let's just do that and see what it comes up with. It is. Remove the Mustang. It's just me. Kind of cool. And I can undo that. Now, what can artificial intelligence do for you in your video? Well, let's click on this and uh, click the AI button. And it can remove pauses and filler words like um and okay and now and so. It can get rid of all of that for you in one fell swoop. Pretty neat if you're trying to narrate a video. Another little AI feature is up here. See where it's got turn on auto captions? So let's turn that on. And it asks, well, what language are you? Well, let's use, I'm going to use English US, so transcribe media. And if I move my timeline along, you'll see at the bottom, there's the narration in text form. I can click captions in the top right hand corner, and you will see that it has it pretty accurate. But I can click on any of this, like Clip Jamp is not correct. I can change it to Clip Champ. There we go. And you might ask why you'd want to do this, because most online services already provide closed captioning. Yeah, but they're not as accurate as this. So I'm going to hide this. Uh, I can upload the video and I can download the captions file to, uh, to provide to YouTube or other sources, which is pretty cool. I'm going to turn off auto captions now because I actually don't want it. But I do want to show you what you can do with graphics again. So let's click on this guy. Uh, over on the right side here, look at effects. I can go through and I can make all kinds of cool changes. So I want to do a slow random zoom. And you can see it's just zooming along. Kind of neat. I can change the color. That looks bad, but you get the idea. Set it to be glitchy. Let's look at it now. Yeah, see it tearing? That's kind of cool, huh? So we've been showing you how to produce a video for a normal screen, but what if you're trying to do something for TikTok or Instagram where you want to go from uh, landscape like this to portrait, you know, up and down? Click above the preview and change the size. So we want it to be vertical. There we go. And then you can move your video around as you see fit. I'm going to undo that because I don't want that. Uh, and then, well, how do we get this out of this editing tool into a format that is usable? No problem. Click export in the top right hand corner. And it says, oh, look, we've got some gaps in the video. Well, let's just have it fix it. Delete the visual gaps. There we go. We don't want any visual gap between slides. Okay, great. And it's, well, what do you want to call us? I want to call us Ian Test. I'll save it on my desktop and click select, click send. And you can see here it's building it. And you can see here I could have pushed it straight to YouTube or straight into TikTok. Handy. Go back to keep editing. Just a couple of quick things before we wrap this up. How do we work with the timeline? You can see that maybe you want to zoom in because you want to see more here or see less. Just down at the bottom here, click the plus, click the minus. You can uh, select fit to timeline. And you could even collapse this if you want to watch the video a little more. And that gets to the question of, well, how large can these be? Microsoft doesn't have a maximum amount of time, but they suggest about half an hour. So if you've got a typical family memorial you want to do or a birthday party or something, go to town. However, if you are looking to produce a corporate presentation that runs for three hours, yeah, this isn't the tool for you. And directly along that line is how many tracks can you have? Microsoft doesn't have a limit, doesn't they don't explicitly say. If you want to have a narration with some background music, with uh, audio that's coming from the video that's already uh, embedded, no problem, it'll work. And right along that line is how to separate audio from video. Uh, because you might want to mute just a portion or something like that, it's not hard. Now, you can see here that there's a group, it's labeled group one, and why is there a group here? Well, that's because you might recall we were doing a screen recording. It, it, wants to match our narration with what's on the screen. So you have to ungroup, so just right click and ungroup. And then I can right click on just the part with the audio. Let's click off of that, there we go. Uh, and select audio and I can detach. And that will separate the audio and the video. Here's the audio. Then I could click on the audio, select the S for cut, 
just press the s on my keyboard again boom and i don't want audio in there anymore so that little chunk is gone maybe there was a car going by in the background or something silly like that hey so now that you've gone from zero to hero you know about 85 percent of the features in microsoft clipchamp and you should have figured out that it's pretty awesome it works really well and while we've gone over an insane number of features don't try to remember all of those things you can figure this out on your own once you know what's possible which is what we've tried to give you here we'll almost certainly have another video on advanced functions shortly but hey if you found this video useful the big thumbs up would be appreciated subscribes always appreciated as well and if you have any questions or concerns you can get a hold of us directly at www.urtech that's www.urtech.ca or you can leave a question or comment below and if we don't get back to you somebody else will because on youtube everybody's got an opinion thanks and have a great day Bye bye